So in this video, we're going to talk about the first boot phase. This first boot phase is no different than you would see in a typical vCenter server appliance install, but we'll briefly gloss over it for the sake of this migration series. So the first boot process begins with a whole series of first boot scripts, and these all run sequentially. So there's a lot of first boot scripts that get enacted, everything from VMAFD, VM identity, solution users, all the way through to EAM, auto deploy, update manager, etc. So depending on whether it's a PSC, vCenter, or embedded system, you'll see a varying number of first boot scripts that are kicked off. They'll all get run sequentially. If any one of them do fail, you will have to restart the migration process again. So every service has its individual first boot log. These will be found in var log first boot, and you'll be able to identify them by their name. There's also a first boot status.json file, and that will track the current progress. And this file is very useful for troubleshooting issues, especially if one of the first boot services fail, to identify which actual first boot failed. So if we take a look at that first boot status.json file, this is an example from a successful first boot. So we can see here total steps 35, completed steps 35, we got a success. If this was a failure, it would tell us exactly which first boot script the failure occurred. So this should always be your first port of call if you're troubleshooting an install, an upgrade, or even a migration issue where the first boot process has failed. You can also take a look at the first boot infrastructure.log. This will step through all the first boot scripts sequentially, and it will also tell us which particular first boot process has failed. Again, in this example, the first boot process was a success. But if we had an issue with one of the first boot scripts, we'd easily be able to identify from either the JSON file or this log which particular first boot process failed, and then we would look at its specific log. So that's a brief summary of the first boot process. It's not different for the migration process, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the import phase, where we import all the vCenter server data to make the vCenter server appliance migration complete. I hope you enjoyed this video.